With the introduction of Darwin Nunes and the departure of Sadio Mane, all of us are beginning to speculate how Liverpool's new attack will shape up. We've all become used to Jurgen Klopp's traditional 4-3-3 formation at Liverpool, with the iconic front three changing, developing and mutating as faces come and go at Anfield, is it perhaps time for a change? In this video, we'll talk through every possible Liverpool attack, with differing personnel, tactics and shape to decide which setup would best suit the new members of Jurgen's front line for the upcoming 2022-23 season. Let's begin with the classic 4-3-3 starting 11, with unsurprisingly three attackers starting. It's obvious that Jurgen has found his perfect formula, and it's incredibly unlikely that he'll ever sway away from his famous 4-3-3 ideology that has performed so well as he approaches his seventh year in the Anfield dugout. The problem with this formation though, as we saw numerous times last season, is choosing three attackers out of five options which can prove very tricky and can result in some top quality players lacking game time. That said, it clearly works and it is the most likely shape Liverpool will adopt for the next season. It's almost certain that making up the right hand side of this front three will be the irreplaceable, immovable Mohamed Salah. One of the best players in the world and one of the greatest Premier League players of all time is a nailed on starter. Despite being out of form towards the back end of last season after playing 70 plus matches, it's understandable that Mo's levels dropped. That said, you'd be an absolute fool not to start him, so he's guaranteed a slot on the right hand side of this three. On the left wing, it's a similar story with Luis Diaz mightily impressing following his £37 million transfer from FC Porto. He's almost certain to start on the left wing of Liverpool's attack. A mercurial talent who's set to light up the Premier League, this time with a full pre-season and fresh campaign in his sights, Diaz will surely feature in Liverpool's strongest forward line. A problem that we're all too familiar with is the third spot in this front three, though these problems may now have been solved with Darwin Nunes. The Uruguayan has been bought in effectively as a replacement for Sadio Mane, but he may be even more than a replacement, with the youngster being a more orthodox striker to fit the number 9 role. With Liverpool spending an initial £65 million and potentially breaking their club transfer record for the striker, it would be crazy not to start him in this front line. Nunes would provide something we've not seen in Liverpool's side under Jurgen Klopp, a front three with a standout number 9 spearheading the attack rather than playing as a false 9. This could propose a slight change of shape as the 6 foot 2 striker will undoubtedly help the team play further up the pitch rather than in a false 9 capacity. Someone who may perhaps be hard done by in this formation is Diogo Jota. Jota was in the form of his career so far last season, yet still remains under the radar and is largely ignored as one of the best goal scorers in the league, which he undoubtedly is, with 29 goal contributions last season. Jota's problem is that he is most effective when used on the left wing of the attack, and though his goal scoring output is superior to Diaz, he is clearly less effective in build up play and creating goal scoring opportunities. Also, when used to the middle, Jota's goal-scoring exploits aren't as strong as they are when he plays out on the left, often finding himself isolated and drifting to the left-hand side regardless. That said, it's yet to be seen whether Klopp will trust Nunes with a starting role in the Premier League this season, particularly in the early matches, so we may see Jota deployed in those opening fixtures. With this doubt over Nunes and Jota in the number 9 role, it may promote an opportunity for Roberto Firmino to make a case for his starting role to return. Bobby struggled with injury last season, but did impress when you sparingly off the bench, scoring some big goals. The false nine is a master of the role and is a system player that could definitely be trusted to perform when called upon, though his goal contribution output has slightly dried up and with just one year left on his contract, it may be time for someone else to take on the starting role, such as Nunes, Jota, or maybe even new signing young Fabio Carvalho. With this newly created attacking lineup headache, it could promote an opportunity for a change of shape. Previously at Borussia Dortmund, Jurgen Klopp's Gegen Press ideology gained fame in a 4-2-3-1 formation, which was also used sparingly in the early days at Liverpool. As previously mentioned, it's so unlikely that Klopp will revert to his old formation and tactics, but with the introduction of Darwin Nunes, it's not completely out of the question. There is perhaps a case for Diogo Jota to start up top once again, but a 4-2-3-1 front four of Diaz, Firmino, Salah and Jota would already have been tried by Klopp, who clearly doesn't seem to want to change his formation. Therefore, the only possibility of a change in starting shape in this sense would be the introduction of Darwin Nunes. This isn't beyond the realm of possibility, 
as it would be silly to not start a new £65 million striker and perhaps the best way to fit him in would be in this new system. This change of formation could also see a new younger face given a chance in the number 10 role, a position which would definitely suit the skill sets of young Harvey Elliott, who had his phenomenal start to last season cut short by injury, but he could provide an ideal skill set in this position. Or, more excitingly, new signing from Fulham Fabio Carvalho has played as a number 10 for the majority of last season. The Portuguese arrives at Anfield a very promising talent, who perhaps doesn't quite suit a false 9 or number 8 position in the traditional Liverpool lineup, meaning this change of formation could suit him to a T. In my opinion, the best way of solving the problem of ultimately deciding between Diogo Jota and Darwin Nunes in a front 3 is to play both in a front 4. At times last season, mainly when chasing a goal, we did see Liverpool switch up to an orthodox 4-4-2, with the recently departed Divock Origi joining Sadio Mane or Diogo Jota up front. Playing this formation naturally has its cons, as it would be a very top-heavy shape and could potentially isolate the midfield with a high-press philosophy, so the selection there also affects this possible attacking lineup. As none of these players would ideally fit the skill set required for a number 10, Fluid movement across the front four would be vital, and with Nunes having the ability to play out wide, and Jota of course being a natural winger, this front four would allow such movement and interchangeability in attack. A 4-4-2 lineup that would blow teams away, particularly where Liverpool have struggled in games against low blocks this season, another attacker thrown into the fray wouldn't do any harm. That said, it's clear Jürgen now favours a midfield three with the high press, and opts for four in attack as a last resort meaning unfortunately we may not see a return of the Dortmund 4-2-3-1, let alone a dream 4-4-2 attack-heavy formation. Which of these attacking shapes do you think suits Liverpool personnel best? And if you had to sway away from the classic 4-3-3, which formation would you use? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe.